Welcome. This is Marcy Shymoff. I'm the author of Happy for No Reason, Seven Steps to Being Happy from the Inside Out. And we're here to talk today about how to turn happiness into money. I'm delighted to have with me as my guest, Phil Town. Phil is the number one New York Times bestselling author of the book Rule Number One, which has been translated into 14 languages and has made the bestseller list in the United States, Germany, and Brazil. Phil is truly a man who knows how to turn happiness into money. And not only is he one of the most brilliant people in the world about making money, he's an old friend of mine. I've known Phil for probably 20 years now, and he has a huge heart. He's totally alive in his spirit. He's the living embodiment of what I mean by happy for no reason. Phil, let me tell you a little bit more about his background. He's taught more people about investing in stocks in the last four years than anyone in the country. Phil comes to investing from a completely different perspective than the Wall Street talking heads. He's a former Green Beret who, after the Army, worked for years as a whitewater river guide and a meditation teacher. His journey from being a broke adventurer to a millionaire investor is nothing short of amazing, going from zero to his first million in less than five years and then ultimately investing millions. Phil has a fabulous story to tell and very practical and powerful tips to share with us on how we can turn our happiness into money. So welcome, Phil. I am so excited to get to be here talking with you. Oh, Marcia, you, you just flatter me completely, and I don't deserve it. And you are one of my great friends. We've been friends for a long, long time, and I really, really am happy for this next great book that you've written. Well, so thank let's you. talk about it. Okay, great. Well, you know, I, I have to say that you are one of the most unconditionally happy people that I know. And I've known you before you made the money, and I've known you after you've made the money, and I've seen you during your journey of making money, and I really do mean it when I say that you know how to turn happiness into money. Now, I have, I, I'd have i like to just start off by having you tell us a little bit about your story so everybody gets gets to hear the uh, the great story that I know about your life. Well, you know, I I think one of the reasons I've done pretty well financially is that I kind of steadfastly refuse to do anything I don't like to do. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's just crazy. I know, but it, you know, I, I really have always just kind of pursued, um, the dream that's in front of my face, you know? Um, I, when I was 18, I, I, <laughs> when I was 18 years old, I, I was working in a gas station and I, and I went into the gas station late one night just to, just to drop by and the place was being robbed and, I, I never told you this story, Marcy. I haven't I, heard this story. No, this I, is great. I, the place was being robbed, and, and the guy that was with me and I just stood there and watched while these guys were completely, like, torturing this kid. You know, they were, like, poking at him with cigarettes, and he was the guy who was running the station, and, and he was our friend, and I was afraid to do it. These were guys in their late 20s, probably, and they were tough-looking guys, and I was 18, and so was my friend. And both of us were afraid to do anything. When the police came later... And we told them, you know, what we'd done, which was nothing. They, the cops looked at us both and just went, what's wrong with you guys? Like, you know, you're total <laughs> wimps. Like, you could have stepped in and done something. And I, I didn't want to be a wimp, so I went, okay, I'm going for it. I'm going to go be, you know, the toughest guy I can find out there. And so I went down and I signed up for the Army to go, go into Army Special Forces. And, and two years later, I, I did that and was in, was in the Green Berets and, I found out, by the way, that the Army taught you to be tough, but their, their version was different than what I expected. I, yeah. <laughs> their version was, we knock you down, you keep getting up, and if you just keep getting up, no matter what, you are a tough guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not that you can beat anybody else up, but you just keep getting up. So I, I kind of did that dream, right? Go off and be a Green Beret, I did that. And then I came back and, and was a little bit lost after Vietnam and, and uh, was looking for something to get into and, and ended up as a river guide in the Grand Canyon. And that became the dream, and I just pursued that. And while I was doing that, I got in, in, my brother introduced me to meditation, and I, that became the next thing. And I p- pursued that over into France and and uh, into India, and and you know I think uh, all these things, just this desire to continually follow your heart and what you want to do, has led me ultimately to where I am now. And when I was in the Grand Canyon, after about nine years of working in the Grand Canyon, you know, making maybe four thousand dollars a year or so, and uh, living in a sleeping bag all that time. 
and teaching meditation in the winter and stuff, um, I was I was taking these guys down this rapid, this big, big rapid in the canyon, and the boat was broken that I was rowing, and I couldn't it couldn't be steered properly, and we just missed getting annihilated in this big, huge 36-foot drop. And we, we sort of made our way around it by great good fortune. And when we got off the boat, one, one of the guys got off and threw up immediately, so I know he was pretty excited by the whole adventure. And, <laughs> and this other guy, this other you guy, huh? Great guiding, right? Yeah, it's a fabulous guiding. And this other guy got up and gave me this big bear hug and, and said, you know, you saved my life and all this. And I, you know, <laughs> really didn't. But he, he I wasn't going to tell him that. So yeah. <laughs> he, he, he said, I'm going to take care of you. And, and uh, at the time, you know, we were sort of living on tips and things. I thought I was going to get a big tip. And, and uh, then he tells me, no, I'm going to teach you to invest. And then, then, you know, the balloon popped because I didn't have any money. I was making $4,000 a year. But he insisted and, and he kept pursuing it. And he became my mentor. And he taught me the basics of, of good investing, which I'm going to, I'll teach you guys here in the next few minutes because they're really straightforward. And, um, you know, I borrowed $1,000 and I started applying these fundamentals of investing and, and, um, you know, things went right for me. And I made a million dollars in the first five years. And, and that's right when I started getting to know you and stuff. And so then, you know, it just kind of went from there. But I'll tell you, you know, what this guy taught me about investing and about money and it was really, really good. But, what I'd already known, what I'd already learned about being happy had really nothing to do with money. Um, you know, money was something that was just a, a part of a process I was wanting to explore, and the money came from that. And I swear, I think I think part of, of living a great life is just following a path less traveled and, and doing it your own way and not being afraid, you know. Of, of well, you know, Phil, so of what I, I – you live such a, a very uh, courageous life. You're a great adventurer, but I think your biggest courage – is in following your dreams and just really being true to yourself. And and that being true to yourself, it seems, creates a, an energy of happiness, and it, it's brought you all of the things that you have. You know, and, I, think, you know and I think, Marcy, being, being true to yourself means, and I really did do this, I worked on this, is to find out kind of who I was. That was mm-hmm. kind of the process, you know, is I, I wanted to know, who who is still town? You know, what am I here for? What's my purpose in life? Is there a purpose to my life? You know, and I, and I wanted to be able to to know that deep down inside I was okay no matter what happened. You know, that's the key that you're okay no matter what happens. That it's sort of there's an inner state of being of what I call peace and well being. That's what I call happy for no reason. Is you have an inner state of peace and well being that isn't dependent on your circumstances. That you'll be you'll be, you carry with you this inner state that you'll be okay no matter what. And that's what I think is truly seemed to have helped you create the success that you did. Oh, and, for and sure. And so many people that I talk to, they often, the people who are successful often have that inner feeling that you carry with you. Well, that's, that's cool to know because I'll, I'll tell you the, 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 the knowledge that you're okay no matter what happens gives you an enormous advantage when you're thinking about doing something with money, mm-hmm. whether it's starting your own business or investing in real estate or going after stocks or, or, or anything you're thinking about doing, there's always the fear of loss. And, and some people have their lives so wrapped up in money that really if you took away their money, it's like you killed them. They're, right. they're that afraid of losing their money. And yeah. that fear stops them from pursuing a great life, I think. I, I totally agree with that? Yeah, Absolutely. So I didn't have that fear. I mean, basically, I don't know, maybe it got shaken out of me from Vietnam or whatever, but, you know, a lot of, a lot of guys come back from, from military service and they feel like every day they have above ground is a good day. It's a free day, you know? Yeah. But that really wasn't what it was. What it was was later in the process of, of meditating and then later prayer, you know, connecting into something bigger than me that gave me that security. You know, it's yeah. not something you can make up in your head, I don't think. You can't just convince yourself of it. I think you have to, have to, it has to become part of you, in a way. Does that make yeah, sense? Well, and, and as I say, and what I talk about in Happy for No Reason is that I noticed when I interviewed these unconditionally, these 100 unconditionally happy people, is that they all had certain habits that they had developed that created that inner state of peace and well-being, that all is okay. And, you know, one of the habits is plugging into spirit through silence, meditation, prayer, you know, habits of, of their thinking. Um, yeah, so that i got to tell you, think... that's, been, that's been fundamental to me for, gosh, I think 30 years now. 
which is being being able to sink down into silence. Yes, the the, the sinking into silence. Yeah. And you know what? So I say this in the movie The Secret that in our culture we have things backwards. We think that getting all these outer things, the car and the house and the relationship, that's going to bring us to happiness. But it's the opposite that's true. It's oh, when right we on. feel that inner inner well-being that the outer things come. In fact, there was a statistic I heard recently that happy people on average will make $750,000 more in their lifetime than everybody else. That's pretty cool. And really happy people make $750,000 a year. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's right. You That's know, right. actually, it's, I'm just teasing a little bit because honestly, it's, I mean, as much as this, we're discussing about money, I, I really want to make this point, Marcy, and that is that I don't think it's about the money. I, I think money is like health. I don't think life's about health either. But if you're not healthy, that's really, if you've ever been really sick, that's all you think about is how to get well so that you can continue with the life that you want to lead. And money's like that for a lot of people out there. If they don't have any, it becomes such a constraint on their life. They're, they know they're not living the life they should be living. They know it deep in their gut. And they haven't found a way out of that boundary. And so it becomes overwhelming concern. And then one of the things that we're talking about here is going deeper than that in your life so that there's some some basis deep in your life that is so deep and so perfect and so whole that the happiness is there regardless. Health, money, whatever's going on on the surface of your life doesn't matter as much as it used to. And that doesn't make you complacent. What it does is it makes you fearless. Yeah. It makes you able to go after the dreams that you have and, and do it without concern of, of I'm going to lose. Because you know you can't lose. You know you're pursuing something that's correct for you. Even if it doesn't take you where you think it's going to, it will take you someplace good. Now, I'm, I'm reminded that Emerson, I think, said that watching a person's life is like watching a ship tacking at sea. It never is going the direction that it's really going. It's always going, you know, some other way. Yeah. As it's tacking back and forth across its true path. And I think my life has certainly been like that, tacking back and forth across a, a path. But I have great confidence in that path. I have great good feeling about the direction I'm choosing to go every day. And because of that, you know, when you get on to someone that teaches you good things about money, then you can pursue it without fear that you're, you're, you're messing up your life. Mm -hmm. So you would say then one of the biggest things for people to do is to really first check in with themselves, be true to themselves, find out who they are and, and, and act, follow those dreams and be very authentic to their, their inner calling. Uh, I'm so huge about that because I think that's where the money comes from. I really do. I think that when you pursue investing, whether it's to start your own business or to pursue public stocks like I have, and I've done both of those, I think if you do it legitimately, that is, I mean, you line up what your investment is going to be with your own personal value system, and you find something in there that you really love. For example, if I wanted to start a business and I'm, I'm really uh, excited about motorcycles, I love riding Harleys, I went out and started a business to, to have Europeans come over and ride Harleys in America. And then that thing took off because I loved it. It was just something I was into. And if I'm investing in a public company, I found myself going down to a grocery store on Saturday nights all the time, and it was just packed with people, and they all people always treated me really well when I went in there. It was I kept looking around. It was big lines around the store, and they always had the best food and a great deli section. So I started putting money into this thing, and, and this was Whole Foods, mm -hmm. and and it took off like crazy. And so you you look for investments, and you look for whether it's your own business or, or public investments where you're connected to the thing in some deep way, and you will do so much better. It's like the money wants to come to you because you're tying in your values with that investment. So, Phil, I mean, rule number one has become a huge bestseller all around the world. As a matter of fact, I was in the airport in Germany a couple months ago, and I was happened to have a few extra minutes. There was a bookstore there. I was standing in the bookstore, and I couldn't read it. I could read hardly any of the books, and there you are on the cover of Rule Number One <laughs> as a bestseller in Germany. It was, it was really great. I took a picture and emailed it to you. <laughs> and Rule Number One is all about it, the subtitle is the simple strategy for successful investing in only 15 minutes a week. You really, really are masterful at this whole game of investing. I also know that if we were to take you away from investing and to plop you anywhere else you would also be masterful at making money. 
you have the um, the the tools to know how to apply yourself to make money. What would you say are a couple of tips? You've already told us that you know absolutely follow what you're interested in. Um, if you're investing, follow the the investments that that are in line with what you like. Um, yeah. What are some other tips about how people in investments or just in in any area of life can turn their um, their passion and their their happiness into money. Okay, that's the key thing is to is to make sure this is going to be fun for you. Okay, so the investments that you choose should be very few. If you're going to have a, a stock investments, make sure there's only four or five of them. This is a and fundamental why is rule because you're going to be deeply involved. You're okay. going to be involved in those businesses in every kind of way. I, if I buy one share of stock, I feel like the person who runs who's who's in charge of that company works for me. And so you want to be as if you're going to own the whole business. And so you're going to be really involved in understanding and learning about these businesses, whether they're a, a company you start on your own or whether you invest in somebody else's. You want, to, you want to be equally involved in understanding what they do. And what you're looking for or what you're going to build is two things, two things that you're looking for as an investment if you're going to buy somebody else's business. The first thing is you want to make sure it's a wonderful business, and I'll tell you more about that in a second. So first, is it a really good business that you really like to own for a long time? And second... What's it worth? And then make sure you're paying a lot less than that. So you want to buy this wonderful business when it's on sale. Okay? Now, the wonderful business part is pretty simple. We already talked about the first part of it. Make sure it connects to your value system so you'll really understand the business well. And second, make sure it's a durable business. I call this a moat. That is the water around the castle, you know, that prevents the castle from being attacked. And in a business, what that big water moat is, is some kind of competitive advantage. And so you're looking, whether you start your own business or whether you buy into one, what is the competitive advantage that you have that you can maintain for a long time? It might be a brand or it might be a secret, like Coca-Cola has a trade secret. Um, and, you know, Microsoft has a brand, so does Coca-Cola. Harley-Davidson has a brand. So we're looking for something that gives you great durability, and that is some kind of competitive advantage um, in the marketplace. And the third thing, so you got values that are connected to you, then you've got make sure it's really durable, long-term, great business. And there's five numbers. I'm not going to go into them now because numbers just kill people. But they're real simple, and you can, you can just go to the library, get them out of my book. There's five key numbers you're going to look for. You want me to tell you what they are? Sure. Okay, real quick. So Because I, I kind of like these things. They're kind of Yeah. Cool. Okay, look for return on capital. And make sure it's at least 10% and it's not going down. And it's been 10% for at least 10 years. 10 years, 5 years, 3 years, 2 years, 1 year. It's always 10% or better and it's not going down. Return on capital. And you can look up what return on capital means on the Internet. Just Google it and it'll be, come up with a definition. The second bunch of numbers, there's four more numbers. They're all basically grouped in as a growth numbers. And you're looking for earnings growth and sales growth. So is the company growing its revenue and is it growing its earnings at about the same rate? And is it also growing its equity? or book value, and is it also growing its cash? And if you've got all four of those numbers growing at about the same rate, 10% or better, year after year, and not going down, that business has a moat of some sort. Mm -hmm. It just can't do it without having some durable advantage. So then you dig in and you find out what that advantage is, and if you decide you really like this business, and then one more thing, you look to see who's running it. Do you love them? Are they great people? Are they honest? And most importantly, do they have, for me, and this is just me, Marcy, this is what I look for in an investment, is is there a big audacious goal that the CEO of that company has, that he's selling everybody in the company is sold on it, and they all want to accomplish this big goal? And if they've got something like that, I swear, Marcy, those are the companies that give you a 1,000 to 1 return. Mm. They're amazing. Those are the future Googles, the future Microsofts, the future Apples, the future Starbucks. They all have that in common is they're led by somebody that's got a big audacious goal and has got everybody in the company drinking the Kool-Aid. You know, you know what yep. I mean by that? Yep. The, I yeah, I sure do. <laughs> so we're, I'm the 70s guy, right? Yeah, drinking right. the Kool-Aid means they're all drinking this spiked Kool-Aid to come to see the world in this way that the CEO has, has created a vision. And you, what you end up with is all these brilliant people working 80 hours a week to make you rich. And it's phenomenal. I mean, it's really And funny. they're all enjoying it. They're on the same oh, page. They're going, oh, man, we're having fun. They're yeah. not the companies that are just boring and people are going, oh, this is such a drag to work here. They're the companies where people are going, wow, I feel, I feel like I'm part of something big and, and this is really fun. And the CEO is selling that vision and the CEO is not a liar. He's not somebody who's taking a $20 million or $40 million payday while his employees aren't getting paid. 
Right. You know, he's he's not he's not got this huge discrepancy between the guys who run the company and the people who work there. He's leading the company. He's more yeah. than a manager. He's a leader, and he leads by example. And his example is, I'm into this with everything I got. He's a Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Howard Schultz kind of guy, and that's who we're looking for. And we're, so how does somebody who's listening to this interview who may or may not have any experience with investing, how are they going to go find these kind of companies? Well, first you start in the areas that you already know a lot about. You you. You take a little test for yourself, and I'll tell you what you do. You draw three circles, okay? And you make oh, sure they're good. all linked I love together. the circle of three. I'm so glad you're going to share this. <laughs> you link them all together so they look like the, tr- the circles on the Olympic sign, you know? And there's one place where they all touch, okay? And that's to give you the idea. You're looking for one thing that's in all three circles. Now, label the first circle passion, and label the second circle talent, and label the third circle money. Now, go back to the first circle and make a list of everything you're really passionate about in your life. Go to the second circle, make a list of everything you're really talented at. Could be the things you work at, could be your hobbies. And then the third circle, every place you're making money or spending money. Particularly attend to where you're spending your money. That's often a big clue as to what you already know a lot about. Now, look on those three circles. Is there anything that's in all three? Like, for example, maybe you're teaching school. You make your money teaching school. You're passionate about educating kids. So it's both in the money-making side and the passionate side. It turns out you feel like you're a really talented teacher. The education world is something you already are deeply connected to. You already love it. You're already deeply in it. You know something about it. Now you just go online to Yahoo or, or MSN, and you look up all the industries, and you'll see one of them is labeled education. And when you click on that online, it'll list a 100 companies that are involved in the education industry. So right there, you've, you've just immediately done an amazing thing. You've, you've taken 13,000 possible public stocks and you reduced them to 100, which are all in this industry that you already know a lot about. And when you start going down that list, I'll bet you anything you see at least five companies that you either have done business with or you're buying their products. And that's where you start. You start to and look at those. And then you apply those you other apply principles. ROIC, the growth numbers. You look at the management and you, and you start to narrow these down looking just for one company in the educational field that you really love and you know it's a wonderful business. It's going to be around for a long time. And then you value the business. That takes a little bit of math, but it's not a big deal. You can do it. Hey, go over to my website, and I, I can, you can download the tools to do that. It's filltown.com. And your website is? Filltown.com, and you can just download some tools that will show you how to put a valuation on a business. So and it's www.phil, P-H-I-L, town, T-O-W-N, dot com. Yep. And, and those tools will, will show you how to value a business, and then you just wait until the market does what it always does, Marcy. It always puts things on sale eventually. It mm-hmm. just goes through these cycles of greed and fear, and when everybody's scared to death over something, it's got nothing to do with this business, it, it just depreciates everything, and you can buy this business for 50 cents on the dollar. That's when you load up the truck, and you've just made your first great investment. Usually within a couple of years, you've doubled your money in that one, once it goes well above what it's worth, you sell it, and then you wait and buy it back later when it's cheap, but you go on to your next one and your next one. And that way, within a relatively short amount of time, you double your money many, many times, and it doesn't take that many. If you start with $1,000 and double your money seven times, you've got a hundred grand. Mm-hmm. Okay? You double it ten times, you've got a million dollars. So it's, it's, the, it's the process of finding things that are going to move up quickly that you already know a lot about, and that's how you do it. So, Phil... I love this, and it takes that also, it takes vigilance, so I know you have to attend to it, you have to actually watch it, you have yep. to, but you have to, that's why it's exciting to, to, to pick something that you're into, because it's something you want to read about. Yeah, I want, to go, I want to go with the kind of vigilance you'd have as an owner. I mean, think about it. If you buy a share of stock, feel like this about it. Feel like, I'm buying the whole company, mm-hmm. and it's the only way my family will make money in the next 10 years. Mm-hmm. And if you feel that strongly about it, that comfortable about it, go for it. Mm-hmm. That's great. Now, that's that's, great. that's serious vigilance. If you can really do that, that's serious. Yep. Vigilance. But that's yep. what it takes. It takes that kind of focus. And the best investors in the world have been doing this for the last hundred years, and they're going to keep doing it. This is the the Warren Buffetts of the world. And if if you don't know anything about investing, read Warren Buffetts' letter to shareholders. He's got twenty years of them, and they're just phenomenal. Another guy to read about is Eddie Lampert, who also follows this way of investing. 
he's, he's compounded his money at 29% a year now, talking billions here, at 29% a year for the last 20 years. So, uh, you know, Bill Ruane at, at uh, Sequoia did this this way. Bill Nygren at Oakmark Select. And the reason I'm mentioning these names is because I want people to understand that this is a very tried and true way of becoming very wealthy the right way. And, 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 and I don't want to just way, It's a way, Phil, though, that, that anyone can do. It's not something that's totally inaccessible. You don't have to be the Warren Buffetts of the world to you do this. But up, up until, I'll tell you, we're in the middle of a revolution in the, in the money world. Up until just a few years ago, the information that I just told you to go get, you couldn't have gotten without a great deal of research, time, and energy, and even having to pay a lot of money to get the information. Today, that information is literally free, sitting on your computer, on your desktop. All you have to know is how to go get it. And that has changed the world. So now the little guy can actually do what the buffets of the world have been doing for 30, 40 years. That's amazing. And so it really is an opportunity that anyone can can use and and work with right now. Uh, it's, it's even better than that. The, the smaller you are, the, the more advantages you have. It's, it's one of these very rare things where being little is a gigantic advantage to you in this world. So I really encourage everybody out there listening to this who's thinking about, you know, how to how to take your happiness and make money with it. This is the way to go as far as I know in my life. It, it, you never regret the investments that you make because you're making investments in things you already love. You're, you're deeply involved in them. You feel connected to these, in, these investments. Uh, that's going to make you a better investor, make you better decisions. And those usually are the ones that give you the best rates of return anyway. Mm-hmm. Well, Phil, I want to go, I want to talk a little bit more about this. We talked earlier about how you have to have the ability to, to, the freedom to feel like you're fine no matter what happens to you. Yeah, pretty because critical. what I, the, I'm sorry? It's pretty critical. It is. Because, you know, what I've seen in all the research that I've done is that having money absolutely doesn't buy happiness. Do you know Marcy, that there it, was a study? I think, it, I think it makes people more afraid the more money they get. It does. You know, there was a study done that showed that 40% of the people on the Forbes 100 wealthiest list are more unhappy than the average American. <laughs> there you and go. The, the there research go. also shows that... Um, that over the poverty line, once you're over the poverty line, more money doesn't bring more happiness. Uh, research shows that we all have a happiness set point, and it's 50% genetic and 50% learned. And no matter what happens to us, no matter what our circumstances are, we tend to return to our original happiness set point unless we do something to change it. And here's another example of that. Lottery winners, which people think this is the golden ticket to happiness, within one year, they have returned to their original happiness set point. Wow. So it, the outside circumstances don't affect our happiness. In fact, there was a, uh, you, you, and the reason is you can never have enough. You know, we have in this society this myth of more, I call it, and that is yeah. the more I have, the happier I'll be, and it's, it's a total myth. There was uh, an interviewer once asked J. Paul Getty, and at the time John Paul Getty was the wealthiest man in the world, and they asked him, how do you know when you have enough? And he said, not yet. <laughs> so if John Paul Getty doesn't have enough, yeah. it's not possible. We yeah. can't get that feeling of enough from outside of ourselves. Yeah. And you know that. Yeah, absolutely. But what would you say to people about how they can get out of the trap of thinking that when they get more money, they'll be happier? Because I believe that one of the reasons why you've been so successful in investing and in business is that you aren't in that trap of, when I have more money, I'll be happier. So how well, do people I, get out I, of that? I, I know that from my past. I mean, I spent, from the time I was 18 years old, I lived in a sleeping bag. I slept in a sleeping bag for about 13 years and survived on just nothing, basically. And, and I was, once I had sort of gotten to this place where we talked about earlier, you know, where I, I was connected to something deeper inside me than me, Mm-hmm. It's just bigger than me. Then, then it just didn't matter, and everything kind of started following from that. And I think, I think a couple things happened. First, that that I think really we are connected to each other in some huge way. I mean, whether whatever word you put on it, whether it's God and you and you get it through Jesus, or it's God and you get it through Muhammad, or it's God and you get it through a, a guru. And he, I don't know where you're going to get it, but you go deep into yourself and you feel this expanse that's there as presence in you 
you start to to live a more authentic life, I think. Mm-hmm. And and life doesn't become about the money at all. I mean, there are people out there. I like I I was very fortunate to build help build a company with Dr. Jonas Salk, and I don't know that Dr. Salk ever had a lot of money of his own. He he refused to take a royalty or any kind of payment for the Salk polio vaccine. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Why no, did he, he didn't Why did he refuse penny? that? Because he felt it, it wasn't what he was, he wasn't about the money. Uh huh. And yet, he never lacked for money. He lived in a beautiful home on the bluffs of La Jolla. I went to his home, he, you know, he, he, he had money, but it wasn't like his life was about money. And, and he, and he would live this very authentic life. And I'll tell you one way I think you can come to get it is, is you start thinking about something outside yourself. If you can think about what you can do to help your next door neighbor or what you can build a business to help somebody down the road to really do something legitimate to help something in the world you've already i think taken a giant step out of this sort of self-interest materialism that americans get accused of all the time and you know i honestly i think money and success follows authenticity and and that's what we really want that's what is is what you legitimately get when you're already happy inside you're already there you're already authentic and that flows directly into the things that you do in your life. Mm-hmm. Does that, does that make sense? Absolutely. I love that you said that. I have, a, because it, it, a lot of it is about contributing to something greater than yourself and, and, and happy for no reason. I have a whole section on contributing to something greater than yourself. I, I have a great quote by Albert Schweitzer that says, I think a lot what, what you were saying. He said, I don't know what your destiny will be, but one thing I do know, the only ones among you who will be really happy are those who have thought and found how to serve. Oh, that rocks. Honestly, I think that's so true. And, the, you know, ironically, the businesses that do the best are the ones that are the best at figuring that out. They're so figuring I out think a way to serve. It's the truth. It's the truth about individuals, and it's the truth yeah. about businesses. You know, yeah. the people and that we know who are the happiest. You, you see, you, you and Phil, you know a lot of people with a lot of money, and some of them are happy. And some of them are really miserable. And yep. you see the ones who are happy are the ones who are, who are also here to serve and, and feeling that purposeful service. Would you say that's true? I'd say it's absolutely true. And if you want any better example than that, I don't even know it other than, uh, than uh, Warren Buffett, who is the second richest man in the world on alternating Thursdays with Bill Gates when he becomes the first richest man in the world. <laughs> and and, uh, and he, he still drives like a 1996 Lincoln. He yeah. lives in the same house he bought in 1960. He is so not about the money ever, and yet his life his life really becomes about service to these people. He he hires CEOs who are there to serve their industries and serve their people, and he is a CEO of that nature. He's there to serve these CEOs. He goes and he helps solve problems. He loves to do that kind of thing. He loves to find legitimate people who are going to run businesses for him. And I mean, you can't look for a better example of somebody who's richer than Midas. And yet, isn't about the money. Yeah. Strangely, I mean, he, the guy just gave away thirty billion dollars. I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't look to a better way of, of saying it than that. You know, yeah. It's not about the money. He's not about the power that comes with it. He's about doing cool things with his life. So I, I think the the most important the most important thing about becoming wealthy is, I think, absolutely to focus, focus, focus on finding that inner peace, inner happiness. Get legitimately grounded in who you are, and then pursue that, and and the money will follow. I love that. And and when people want to learn the specifics about how to invest, your book really tells it all. They can just go to rule number one or your website, which is www.philtown.com. But I and I also want people to know that you write about this this deeper emotional side of money as well. When you write a, a regular blog, don't you? I do, and I write about these things, and, and uh, I don't know that my audience loves this as much as your audience loves this, but ultimately I feel like it's, it's sort of a duty to, to let people in on this secret that, you know, first, you're, if, if really what you want to do is you want to get out of the financial binds that you're in, first look deep inside and, and, and find that center find whatever you want to call it. I'll call it God. Okay, I'll say find God. Absolutely. And we go from there. Spirit. Plug into your <laughs> spirit, we call it. Find whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah, and, and anchor yourself in that. And really, if you're not sure how to proceed in terms of what to do next, look around for somebody to help and take a step in that direction. It will lead you in the right way, for sure. 
And then third, if you want to learn the rules of investing from that point on, so that, you, you know, investing is like, you know, snowboarding. There are rules. There, you know, there's gravity. You need to learn about these things. As you, as you start to build up more and more capital to invest, you don't want to lose it from breaking a rule. So follow some rules. My book will help, and, and it'll lead you to other books, other resources. Everything Marcy Shimoff writes, I read. She's a great resource for me to keep building, building, building myself. And you guys should be reading everything she does. So I'm real excited that you that you're taking this whole thing about money and, and happiness the direction it should be taken, Marcy. Well, it feels so much. It, you know, I, I tell you, I came to write Happy for no reason. When I I tell people that I had five goals in my life, and that I thought when I had those five goals, that's it, I'd be absolutely happy. And my five goals were to have a great career with lots of money a great husband, a great house, a great uh, great friend, and Halle Berry's body. And I tell people that I got the great career with lots of money. I got the great husband. I got the great house. I got the great friends. I don't have Halle Berry's body, but four out of five isn't bad. You pretty but, much do, girl. You're pretty, you're pretty good looking, babe, I'll tell you that. And, and, but what the, what the bottom line was, I found that none of those outer things were ultimately going to bring me or anybody else, the deeper happiness that I was looking for. Yeah. And when I found out that this research about um, how we have a happiness set point and that we can actually raise our happiness set point, and that's the key to becoming happier, oh, I was God. thrilled. And that's, that's what I've done with, uh, with putting together Happy for No Reason. And I absolutely believe that life here, as I know you believe, Phil, is to be about all of life. It means to be about happiness inside and abundance on the outside, but in a way where our lives are balanced and full of joy and full of service, contributing to the world. And exactly. all of that is, is total wealth. Exactly. That's real wealth. You don't, you don't get it with just a piece of, of, of money out there. It's real wealth. And if, if you have to give up the money, if you had to take one of those two things, you take the inner peace every time. Because right. I swear, and Marcy... The money will follow. Absolutely. I believe that 100%. You take the happiness first and the money will follow. Yep. Phil, I love talking to you. I could talk to you forever about this stuff. And I think that um, you're, you're, you're doing a great service to people by sharing with them um, the true values, the true perspective on money, and then also the specifics about how, how to make money in their lives. Well, I'm, so, I'm so excited about your book. I think it's really groundbreaking. And I think that that you're changing the paradigm, and, and it's something I've been talking about for a long time. You've really made it come all into one place in one book. So my congratulations to you, Marcy. You've done it again. Um, you are phenomenal for doing that. And I just want to thank you very much for letting me have an opportunity to spend some time with you and talk about this stuff. Well, thanks. It was lots of fun. We were, we were both uh, doing what we love to do, which is talking about the things we're passionate about, money and happiness. And um, I look forward to doing... More interviews with you in the future, Phil. Thanks so much. <laughs> and too. My pleasure always. Great. For more information on Happy for No Reason books, coaching, paraliminal CDs, and seminars, go to www.happyfornoreason.com. And, and to everybody listening, I enjoy turning happiness into money. Bye-bye.